the uh, the guy who wants to be the governor of uh, North Carolina, this Republican crazy son of a bitch. I mean, this guy is out of his mind. Yes, he's a black man. And when it comes to his name's Mark Robinson, when it comes to this guy, the question isn't which of his bigoted remarks to mention, but when to stop. This guy is a real piece of work. And I, I just can't I, I, I can't comprehend black folk voting for him until I stop and think I can't comprehend white people voting for Trump. I know no self-respecting white person is going to vote for Trump. I, I know this. You have to be deeply involved in self-hatred and your Christian bullshit to vote for Trump. I don't know about black folk. Why would a black person vote for this crazy son of a bitch? Since he won the pri- he won the primary, North Carolina Republican primary earlier this month. He is lieutenant governor. And he has come up with statements. Oh, he's also a preacher, of course. He's come up with comments in interviews and in his sermons. And he quotes Hitler positively. He refers to LGBTQ people as filth. That's his word, filth. He has said that Muslims are terrorists and that Hollywood actresses are whores. What do you suppose this crazy son of a bitch would say if somebody said, you know, you're black, so you're filth? Well, the quick answer is he's probably heard that all his life from white people. Or a variation of that. So apparently he's internalized it and decided he's going to spew it out like a fire hose on anybody who gets in his way. Now, when he's asked questions about whether he is anti-Semitic or homophobic or anti-Muslim or uh, uh, misogynistic. Mr. Robinson, who is, like I said, a black man, he responds by arguing that actually he is the real victim of bigotry, which he probably is. I mean, he's a black man in America. How could he not be a victim of bigotry, but he's also the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. I remember when I was a kid, I'll get back to Mark in a second. When I was a kid, one of the expressions that over the years I realized was such a goddamn insult and slap in the face of, of black folk. And that was when I would hear a white person or a black person referring to somebody of color as a credit to my race. Do you remember that? Uh, who is the woman who won a, uh, the black woman who won a, an Oscar, the first black woman uh, to win an Oscar for Gone with the Wind of all movies, for Christ? Hattie McDaniel, was that who it was? And I think she mentioned that phrase in her acceptance speech to be a credit to her race. Now, granted, that was back in the, what, late 30s. Uh, okay. But when I hear somebody use that expression, I haven't heard it in decades. It's gone, buried. But that expression, well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I am African American and I'm trying to be a credit to my race. Woo. Woo. But Mark Robinson, if anything, is not that. <laughs> no, no. And the race I'm talking about is the human race. Don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about the, the black or brown or white or whatever color race. I'm talking about the human race. Mark Robinson is a goddamn disgrace, a thug, a punk, and a typical MAGA bastard, Mark, Mark Robinson. And he made the allegation that, no, it's... He is the victim. Sounds just like Trump. Oh, I'm the one. Everybody picks on me. The court system, it's all run by George Soros and a bunch of goddamn Jews and queers. They're out to get me. They're trying. That's been Trump's mantra, his whole useless, filthy life. And, and the people who suck up to him the worst, like this guy, Mark Robinson, just adopt what the chief is saying. 
And Robinson made this allegation about he's a victim of bigotry on a podcast hosted by Charlie Kirk, that right wing racist little fucker who who set up what what's the organization he set up that goes after college students. But Robinson, Mark Robinson called George Floyd the guy who was choked to death by white cops in Minnesota. Mark Robinson called George Floyd, quote, a scumbag. You see what I'm talking about? A scumbag. And he said he wonders whether black pilots are qualified to fly a plane. I mean, I, 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 you know, I get lost for words. This black man wonders if black pilots are qualified to f- fly a plane. And he says that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was, his word, awful. You miserable prick. But somehow, the people of North Carolina, the white people, white people, please, the white people of North Carolina gave this guy the Republican primary to run for governor. Oh, my God. When Charlie Kirk asked this piece of human shit why he thinks he's such a threat to what Charlie Kirk calls the, quote, MSNBC crowd, end quote, that would be me. That's me, Charlie. Look over here. Look down here in the foothills of the North Georgia mountains. You see me waving my arms? You idiotic white piece of trash, you. That's me. I'm part of the MSNBC crowd. Hello. Anyway, when Charlie asked why Robinson believes he's such a threat to people like me, that's when Mr. Robinson called racism. According to Robinson, liberals are only reminding people of his extremism because they fear a black man might hold par- power in the Republican Party. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, where's this asshole Mark Robinson been for the past 25 years? You dumb shit, you. Go back to whatever the fuck you were doing, Mark Robinson, before the white devils in North Carolina decided to elevate you and make you look like the fool that you really are. O-M-F-G. How did this guy get to be lieutenant governor to begin with? But he says, Mark Robinson says that us whites fear, or no, he didn't say whites, he said liberals. Fear a black man holding power in the Republican Party that might appeal to disaffected black voters in the Democratic Party. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll happen, Mark. They're uh, definitely going to go. My black brothers and sisters are going to go for somebody who says, well, you know what? Black people aren't qualified to fly an airplane. And Martin Luther King Jr. was awful. And George Floyd was a scumbag. You miserable bastard, Mark Robinson. Jesus. This is what I'm going to give you a direct quote of what this dumb shit said on Charlie Kirk's program. Okay, here's the quote. And this comes from MSNBC, of course. Quote, in my case, what they really see is they see a candidate that is able to reach out to those folks. He's talking about black people. Bring common sense solutions to the problems they face. And then they see someone who looks like them. And ultimately what happens There is, we get into office and there's success and all of a sudden voting dynamics in North Carolina are changing for decades and quite possibly it starts across the nation. They're very afraid of that. They don't want that to happen. They cannot have a conservative black man at the helm of North Carolina or in any state because it's going to show the great results of what President Trump did at the national level. End quote. What the fuck? More gibberish. Have you noticed there are two things that happen when somebody swears allegiance to the to the Antichrist pig bastard Donald Trump? The first thing is they give up their humanity. They they just let go of everything that their mamas taught them or their grandmothers taught them. Uh, everything they learned, they let it go. 
in order to follow this lying rapist son of a bitch Donald Trump. That's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is they become totally fucking ignorant to the point where they can't put together a comprehensive sentence, much less a paragraph. And they start shrieking the same words that come spewing out of the mouth of Donald Trump. What? You know, I, I cannot understand the hold that Trump has on so many people. I, I, I can't. I, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't understand why he, he, to me, he is so completely obvious, Donald Trump, and anyone who follows him. But it always jolts me. It, it does. And, and this may be because of my racist attitude or the dregs of my racist attitude that I've fought against for the past, my entire life, really, since I was in my 20s. But when I hear a a, a black person go to the lengths that this son of a bitch goes to to suck up to Donald Trump, I, I think about, I don't know, Stockholm Syndrome. You become aligned with the with, with the organization or the group or the person who is holding you captive? Because Mark Robinson has been held captive all his useless fucking life. I don't give a shit if he was the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. That means nothing to me when he opens his mouth and spews this kind of garbage out. I mean, for the past, over the past half century, I've lived here in Atlanta, The cradle of the civil rights movement, more or less. You know, I got to know some of the the driving forces, the people behind the civil rights movement and what they went through, what they suffered, the beatings, the, 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 the humiliation, the denial of basic human rights. And out of that process... I developed a kind of respect that could only come for a white person, could only come from getting to know these people, being around them, seeing what they've done, what they continue to do. These people, I'm referring to people who are struggling for human rights. And then a piece of human shit like this guy shows up. Mark Robinson, huh? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me... Mike Malloy are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.